This video is sponsored by Rocketstock.com. In this After Effects tutorial, we're gonna create an awesome, fast opener. Hey, what's going on internet? This is Josh Noel from Sunduck Film. So this tutorial is compact with a bunch of handful techniques, so that's why I broke this tutorial down into four parts where we'll talk about each element that goes into creating a fast intro, a fast opener. This can be used for a variety of different After Effects projects, but at the end of the day, you're gonna be able to create an awesome After Effects project with all these amazing techniques. So let's go ahead and jump in the video and let's get started. To start off our tutorial, we're gonna start with creating shapes. All right, so here we are inside of After Effects and we're gonna start off with our tutorial composition. I already have text in here along with a video background. So we're gonna start creating shapes and we're gonna start with creating X icons. So come here to the textile tool, click here and we'll type out X. And I'm gonna use the typeface Gotham with a bold font. And when this is in here, we can of course scale it down, you know, do what we want with it. And from here, what I'm gonna do is hit T on my keyboard for opacity. I'll click the stopwatch and I'm gonna type in wiggle open parenthesis two comma 100 close parenthesis. And that's wiggle open parenthesis two comma 100 close parenthesis. And now we have a random X here and we can come here and duplicate this, bring us over here to the other side. We can change the font style to like a light typeface and we can duplicate it again. If you don't know how to duplicate, go up to edit, duplicate. And we just move these around and start randomizing how these X's are going to appear on our screen. It can be kind of random or even a little bit more strategic. We can even scale some of these down by hitting S on our keyboard. So this will be one element of detail that we'll add. Now I wanna add a little bit of separation between the title and background. You can see in our demo comp, we're using a circle, but in our new composition here, I'm gonna use this a rectangle. If you wanna use a circle, there's the ellipse tool. And make sure you set the fill to a certain color that you would like. So maybe I'll do like purple or something and make sure stroke is turned off. And we'll come here and we'll draw out a rectangle like this. And then we'll place the shape layer underneath our title and we'll come here to the align tab and center this up if you don't see the align tab go to window align and then simply i'm going to hit t on my keyboard for opacity and i'm going to lower the opacity of this shape layer so i went ahead and actually reorganize this to be across the screen it's really up to you how you want to position you know, your background separation i really like it this way we'll open up rectangle one we'll come here to the rectangle path one and we'll come here and add a keyframe for size and position We'll move these keyframes forward in time to about a second or so, maybe a little quicker than that. And then we'll break the chain for size. And we'll set the X size down to zero. And then I'm coming here to the X position and I will move this line over to the, you know, left side of our composition, just on the edge there. So now they'll look like the rectangle is animating in from the left. Very cool. And of course, make the last keyframes easy, ease keyframes by hitting F9 on your keyboard. All right, so let's work on two more elements and let's move on. So right here, we'll grab the ellipse tool and we can say select white, click OK. And we're gonna draw out a very, very small circle. Come here, hold down shift on keyboard, and there's a circle. Then we'll come here to add, and we're gonna add a repeater. And we'll open repeater one, go into transform repeater one, and where it says the X position right here, let's go ahead and bring this one inward to maybe about 30 or so. And then we'll come here to the number of copies, and we can increase this all the way you know, across like this. So boom, goes across our composition. And from here, we'll come here at the beginning of our composition and we'll add a keyframe for copies. We'll move this keyframe forward in time, so maybe to you know, almost a second. Bring the number of copies down to like four or something and we can have these, and this will animate it in. And we can come here to say the end opacity and we can lower the end opacity so they won't be perfectly you know, in focus, right? And then from here, we can go to add and add another repeater. Go to repeater two, come here to transform repeater two and where you see the X position, set that down to zero and bring down the Y position. And this will create an extra layer of you know circles here. We can increase the number of copies if you want. And I went ahead and added some more dots in here as well, just to add more detail to this composition. It's all about just adding more stuff to this to make it look more interesting. And I guess a little bit more busy if you will, but none of it is really cutting over the title. Let's do one more element here and that's gonna be a series of triangles. So what I'm gonna do is grab the polygon tool and I'm just going to simply come here, draw out a you know, polygon, and we'll come here to polystar one, come here to polystar path one, where it says points. We're gonna set this down to three. And then we come here to transform polystar one and set the rotation up to 90 degrees. So now we got this triangle pointing this way, it looks great. And then like before, we'll go to add and we're gonna add a repeater. And one thing I like to do here is come here to the end opacity and add a keyframe for it and bring it down a little bit. 
And then we're gonna come here and just create our own like manual flicker between zero to 100 by going from, you know, 0% to 100%. And we're just, you know, manually keyframing this. And then we can duplicate this layer and we could just move this around, you know, scale it down if we have to. And then if we want, we come here to fill, turn it off, click OK. Come here to stroke and turn it on to solid color and we'll have an outline of this. Just adding a variety of elements will add details to this composition and make it look more interesting than what it is. So there's a variety of different ways to create shape motion graphics. Go ahead and check our links in the video description if you need more help on this topic. We've created some amazing tutorials that will help you with that. But to move on, we're gonna quickly spice up this composition and we're gonna create some overlaid assets. So next up, we're gonna create overlays and start making this seem a little bit more interesting. So we'll come here and we'll grab all of our elements, go to layer pre-compose, and we can call it all shapes and click okay. And from here, what we'll do is we'll duplicate this composition We'll grab the pen tool here at the top and we can, you know, add a point over here, hold down shift on our keyboard. So we draw out a straight point like this Add that point over there. And then we'll just close this up like this. So we have this mask box over here and can do this in a variety of different ways. But from here, what we're going to do is hit S on our keyboard for scale. And we're going to scale this up just like that. And then we'll hit M on our keyboard for mask one. And we'll go come here to the beginning of our composition. Add a keyframe for mask path. We'll move forward to the end of our composition. We'll just say three seconds is the end of our composition. And we'll grab and we'll grab the selection tool and we can like move this up if we want or downward. You know, it doesn't really matter. This will add like a nice level of detail to our composition. And what we can do here, go to effect perspective and add a drop shadow. And we can increase the softness by a lot, maybe to about a hundred and maybe even increase the opacity or lower it depending on how much you want. And this will actually add a parent you know, separation to this. We might have to change the direction downward to 180 degrees and increase the distance, but this will you know, help add that extra separation there. Uh, maybe we'll actually bring down the opacity and you know, that looks cool. And then we can do this again. We can duplicate our all shapes here, bring it to the top. You know, we can do another series of mask just like this. So this is currently what we have with our elements and our overlaid shapes and it's coming together. So our first composition is coming together just fine, but these are you know built in after effects techniques. For our next technique, I want to take a look at stock elements to help enhance our overall composition. So to help spice this up, I really suggest adding you know stock elements like lens flares or light leaks. And I actually have a pack of light leaks right here from rocketstock.com who is sponsoring this video. And they have a pack that I'm gonna use right here called Spectrum, which has 64 vintage light leaks. And I will drop a link in the video description if you want this light leak set. It's really high end 4K files. And it, these are legitimate light leaks as they were captured on eight millimeter film. You can grab any stock element that works for you, but let me just show you how this helps spice up our composition just within a few seconds. So I can grab say light leak five here, drag it on top of our footage. We'll come here to blend mode and we'll set it to screen. And I'll hit S on my keyboard for scale and I'll scale this down since this is 4K footage here compared to my 1080 composition. And then I'll also grab Light Leak 9 and bring this on top of everything and do the same thing, set it down to screen and scale this down. And within a few seconds, these Light Leaks specifically or stock elements help increase the value of our compositions and make things look a little bit better. Now, of course, for a spectrum, these Light Leaks, you can use them for pretty much anything, whether you're compositing video, you're editing in Premiere, you need like a transition, or you just wanna make things look a little bit more vintage, these Light Leaks are amazing. And I will drop the link to this pack in the video description. So now that we have our first composition pieced together, let's move on to our fourth and final technique, which is the transitions to quickly transition over to the next slide if you wanna work with that, or just move on to your video or whatever happens after this intro. So let's go ahead and jump into transitions and see what we can do. So lastly, we'll talk about the transition and let's get this going pretty quick. Go up to layer, new adjustment layer, and we'll come over here, go to effect, distort, and we're gonna add optics compensation right here. And this is gonna be like our beginning transition. So we'll come here and we'll increase the field of view to maybe about 80 or so. Check on reverse lens distortion. We'll add a keyframe for field of view. We'll move forward to, you know, 17 frames or so and bring the field of view down to zero. Hit U and keyboard, bring up the keyframes, make the last keyframe an easy ease keyframe. All right, so now we have, you know, this little distortion like this, and that looks pretty cool. And then what we could do is also go to layer new null object, and we'll parent everything except for the adjustment layer to the null object by grabbing the pick whips here and parenting it to the null object. Hit S on keyboard for scale, add a keyframe for scale, move it forward in time to 17 frames, and we can scale this forward by a little bit. Make the last keyframe an easy ease keyframe. 
and that'll add just an extra scale parameter to it. And then when you're working, say, with multiple slides or you want to transition to another, say, video or something, what we can do here is grab all of our layers and pre-compose it. And we can call it, you know, all and click OK. And then we can add our other composition. And I will add this here to our main composition. So this is like our demo comp. And what I'll do is I'll offset our second composition to maybe two and a half seconds here. And this is looking good. And then what we'll do here at two and a half seconds is we'll go to uh, edit split layer and we can just delete it. So this new composition will start at two and a half seconds and the other one will end. And what we can do here is go to layer new null object. And we can parent this to the null object. And we will hit P and S on keyboard for scale and position. And right before this first one ends, we'll add a keyframe for scale and position. And we'll move forward here past the second one. And we will, you know, add a keyframe for scale and position. And we can have this one spin up like this. And that's fine. And we'll come here to the cut here and we can scale this downward to maybe 70%. Now what we need to do is go to layer new adjustment layer, go to effect stylize, and we're going to add a uh, CC repeat tile. And where it says expand down, we're going to bring this one all the way down and we're going to go down like crazy. Okay. And then we can, you know, expand the right and expand the left. And then we'll come here to the last position keyframe. And then we'll continue to expand downward and we will bring up the Y position until our new slide is right there at the top, just like that. And then keep bringing it down until you fill up the composition. So now we'll make sure to grab all of our keyframes here and make them easy ease keyframes. And when it's all said and done, you should be able to create like a fast opener or even a slideshow like this. So there's our four techniques on creating this fast intro slideshow, whatever you want to call it. But these are amazing After Effects techniques that should help you in your After Effects compositions when you need to, you know, get something out there that's fast paced, action based. Um, and this tutorial hopefully has been helpful. If you did enjoy this video, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Sunduck Film. We post two post-production tutorials every week right here on the channel. And you can also hit me up on my social media networks. Those links are in the video description and always be creating.